Good evening. Before we get started tonight, let's pray in. Heavenly Father, just thank you so much for your presence here tonight. I pray that you speak through me with your Holy Spirit and you use this faithful message to speak to my brothers and sisters here this evening. It's in the precious name of Jesus Christ that we lift this time to you. Amen. Well, good evening. I've been on a journey with Jesus since 2009, and the Holy Spirit has transformed me along the way. He has redeemed me from addictions and <clears throat> removed sexual immorality and pornography from my life as he was preparing me for marriage for my beloved wife, Stacy Jo. <clears throat> he took this bankrupt alcoholic and he transformed me into a sober, financially responsible husband, father, and student of his word. I am living a transformed life, but I am challenged with consistently trusting Jesus over my own ability. Even as he has led me out of dark places, sometimes I get caught up in doubt and I wonder if he'll do it again. <clears throat> I know. I know that it's his strength and his perseverance that brought me this far. However, if I'm honest, sometimes I meet life challenges with anxiety and frustration instead of trusting Jesus. My wife and I have an adorable little shih tzu named Princess Leia. Usually when I come home, she meets me at the door. Sometimes she doesn't, though, and I wonder where she's at. And I'll call out to her, I'll say, where's my little Leia bean? <laughs> And more sooner than later, she'll, she'll come running and peek her head around the corner as if to say, Here I am, you silly man. Where's the beef? <laughs> Sometimes I think Jesus says the same thing. Minus the whole where's the beef thing. When life's responsibilities become overwhelming, Oh my goodness, how am I going to get all this done on time? <clears throat> when I'm so tired I can't think straight, Oh, Jesus, I need you now. Where are you? He may patiently say, Here I am, you silly man. Did you think I'd leave you now? Can anyone relate to what I'm talking about here? Have you ever thought that your last doubting moment was the last straw for Jesus? <clears throat> As a believer, have you ever wondered if Jesus will do it again? Do you think that he's shaking his head in disbelief because you have shocked him with your doubting ways? After all, he had no idea that our faith in him would be a journey full of distractions from his glorious, kind, and patient demeanor. He had no idea that it would take us this long to come around to his faithfulness out of our doubtfulness. Have you ever thought that he's had enough and he's just going to leave you on your own? Well, as it turns out, this is not a new thing for humanity. Faith in Christ has been a journey since the first century. So breathe easy, my friends. We are not alone and our challenge with doubt is not new. Faith is a journey. As you breathe that sigh of relief, please turn with me to Matthew <clears throat> chapter 14, verses 22 through 33, and we will see that even Jesus' disciples experienced faith as a journey. <clears throat> this passage references the time just after Jesus fed the 5,000. Matthew writes, Immediately he made his disciples get in the boat and go ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. <clears throat> after he dismissed the crowds, he went up to the mountain and he, by himself to pray. And when evening came, he was there alone. By this time, the boat, battered by the waves, was far from land, for the waves and the wind were against them. And early in the morning, he came walking out on the lake toward them. What we see here is that before Jesus walked out, on the lake to the disciples. He spent all night in prayer with the Father. Additionally, their whereabouts and their condition was no surprise to them. Jesus wasn't walking out on the Galilee searching and shouting, Peter, where are you? That was certainly not the case. He knew right where they were. This is to say that Jesus knows right where we are in our struggle. The text offers no indication that the storm had subsided. So all that we know is that the disciples are still in the storm, and Jesus, fresh off a great night 
of prayer with, with the Father effortlessly walks out to them. This is to say that Jesus does not have peace in the storm, but rather Jesus is peace in the storm. <clears throat> we read a similar account in Matthew chapter 8, when the disciples were caught in a different storm, except in this storm Jesus was actually in the boat with them. He was sleeping, but he was visibly with them. But here in chapter 14, verse 22, it says that he immediately made them get in the boat and go to the other side. Jesus purposefully, intentionally, sent them out without him this time. This displays that Jesus was incrementally training his disciples to live by faith and not by their own senses. Jesus knew that their faith was a journey, and he was training them to grow along the way. Let's continue with verse 26. But when the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified, saying, It's a ghost! And they cried out in fear. But immediately, Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. In the first century, there, were, there was a general belief in the existence of ghosts and spirits that induced fear. In their stormy and uncertain situation, the disciples mistook Jesus as a fearful apparition. But Jesus paid no mind to their fearful reaction. As he is perfect peace, Jesus wasted no time speaking over and into the disciples' fear as he encouraged them to take heart. Heart is translated from the Greek verb tharseo, meaning be courageous. So Jesus encourages his disciples just before he identifies himself and tells them to not be afraid. As we are getting to know Jesus, change can be frightening. However, Jesus offers no fear to those who call upon his name. And as we come to know and understand him along our journey, we find that his perfect love drives out all fear. <clears throat> when we take the time to write out this quotation, take heart, it is I, do not be afraid, we see that Jesus is at the center of our courage in the absence of fear. Let's continue with verse 28. <clears throat> Jesus answered him, or Peter, sorry, Peter answered him, Lord, if it's you, command me to come to you on the water. Peter was so distracted that he fails to recognize the one whom miracles he, he witnessed just less than a day ago. I believe right here we need to recognize and understand that the disciples are Jewish men who have been under the old covenant law all of their lives. Jesus' new covenant is new to them and they are learning this new faith. They are literally on a faith journey with the one whom the writer of Hebrews recognizes as the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. Faith does not start out as unwavering. I believe here that Matthew was recognizing the faith journey and the challenges therein. <clears throat> so Peter says, Lord, if it's you, command me to come to you on the water. And then Jesus said, if it's me... Seriously, Peter, who else would be taking a stroll out here on the Galilee? If it's me? Wow, Peter, just wow. If it's me, I'm out of here. Fortunately for Peter, and fortunately for us, that's not what Jesus said. What he said was come. He said come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came toward Jesus. And verse 30 goes on to say, But when he noticed a strong wind, he became frightened, and he began to sink, and he cried out, Lord, save me! In these verses we see Peter's faith peak momentarily, so much so that he got out of the boat, walks on the water for just a moment, and begins to fall under the waves of doubt. <clears throat> Perhaps because Peter had been a fisherman all of his life, he thought, as he stepped out of the boat, well, if I can't walk, at least I can swim. If this is the case, perhaps Jesus allowed Peter to sink to show Peter that his security is found only by the right hand of Jesus and not by his own skillful ability. Peter had faith enough to step out of the water to Jesus, but he was distracted and he sunk into doubt 
even though he knew what he had witnessed in Jesus. Peter was discovering that faith is a journey and his true security is found only in Jesus Christ. Let's move on to verse 31. <clears throat> Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying, You have little faith. Why did you doubt? And when they got back in the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. The text notes that Jesus immediately reached out to Peter and rescued him. We read in verse 22 that Jesus immediately made him get in the boat and go. And in verse 27, Jesus immediately identified himself over the disciples' fear and immediately, just now, reached to help Peter. And all three verses immediately is translated from the Greek adjective euthus, which surprisingly means immediately. But all joking aside, where we are slow to respond to Jesus' faithfulness, he is swift to react to our doubtfulness when we choose to call upon his name. Let me say that again. When we are slow to respond to his faithfulness, he is swift to react to our doubtfulness when we choose to call upon his name. We read that Jesus and Peter get back into the boat and the wind stopped and all was well on the Galilee. The disciples worshipped Jesus as he had once again calmed the wind and the waves. Again, this moment is similar to the storm recorded in Matthew chapter 8, when the disciples were amazed and wondered who Jesus was to calm the wind and the waves. Even as the disciples addressed Jesus as Lord in Matthew 8, we can see that they were still learning and realizing who he truly was. In chapter 14, they still are. From the, but however, from the, the storm in chapter 8 to the storm in chapter 14, we see their faith progress from shock and awe that Jesus calmed the storm to worshiping him in the boat after they witnessed him walking on the water, rescuing Peter, and calming another storm. Yes, they showed signs of doubt during a terrifying storm, but... They also elevated, their faith also elevated as they took one more step away from unbelief and one more step toward believing that Jesus is who he says he is. Faith is a journey, and we see this through Matthew's text as Jesus is patient with his disciples as their faith in him grows. Faith is a journey that is full of opportunities to recognize Jesus in our storms. Faith is a journey of growth when we choose to answer Jesus' call, get out of the boat, and get closer to him. Faith is a journey where we learn to rely upon the power of Jesus and not on our own ability. Faith is a journey that saw Peter, who was unable to recognize Jesus in the storm, to declaring him as the Messiah in Matthew 16, and thus being named the rock upon which Christ will build his church. Friends and family, what storm are you going through today? Are you willing to trust Jesus through your storm? What is your next step of faith toward Jesus? Are you worn out from constantly treading water? Are you sinking in doubt and drowning in self-sufficiency? Are you ready to trust Jesus to lift you up? Will you trust Jesus to guide you through that financial despair? Will you trust Jesus to guide you through those health challenges? Will you trust Jesus to restore your challenging relationships? Will you trust him to mend your broken heart? Are you ready to get out of the boat and trust him to show you the miraculous? Imagine what transformation is on the other side of your next faith step. Imagine... What would happen if we all trusted Jesus as much as he is patient with our slow and shallow faith? Imagine what a kinder, a gentler, a more patient Jesus culture would look like when we trust his will instead of our own. Imagine revival spreading throughout our cities, our states, and our country as we reckon our entire lives to the sovereignty of Jesus Christ. Friends and family, faith is a journey and the change begins with us today. 
As you begin to make your way home today, we encourage you all to elevate your faith journey today and as you're going into this next week. Step out of faith and accept hardships as a pathway to His perfect peace. Trust that He is in control and take this word as it is, not as we would have it. Trust Jesus to make all things right as we trust in His great, perfect, and pleasing will. Please go knowing that we love you all. And in Jesus' name, let's make it a great week.